Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Cats YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jacob Shorba, and today we have some really exciting news. Just came out probably five, ten minutes ago. Uh, I tried to record even faster in this, but I had to talk to my brother because he's a Jags fan. We're all excited about it. But we just completed a trade right before the trade deadline was over for Ezra Cleveland from the Minnesota Vikings. This is a fantastic move for the Jaguars. I truly believe that in every aspect of it. Um, funny enough, this was a guy I actually mentioned about a week ago. I was thinking about him before that as well. Uh, gonna have it pinned on my Twitter for a while because it's pretty lucky to, to guess it. But uh, I felt like with Daniil Hunter and his value going up, if we were going to trade with the Vikings, who had several players we could really go after at that point, um, Ezra Cleveland was one of them that made the most sense. For uh, just some knowledge on Ezra Cleveland, Ezra Cleveland, he's a left guard in the NFL, plays for Minnesota. He started for them every year. Um, seems like he's been replaced at this point. He was essentially replaced uh, a couple days before this by Dalton Risner amid Ezra dealing with some injuries. So Dalton, pretty good guard too. I don't think he's as good as Ezra, but he's done well in Minnesota. Cheaper option, Ezra's coming up on a new deal soon. This is his final year on his rookie contract. He's a second round pick as well. No fifth year option. He's a very cheap option for the Jacksonville Jaguars, but Ezra early this season, huge part of Minnesota's success with their offensive line. They've arguably had the best one in the entire NFL. He's one of the key pieces on it. Very good guard. Um, you just look at his stature as well. The size um, overall height, Wait, all these things scream the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive line unit. And he also, in addition, has worked with Phil Rauscher before, who I believe was with Minnesota. Or in some way, these two are connected. So this made a ton of sense for Jacksonville to pursue. But they look for a lot of these agile players, these guys that can move around, still have ample strength, but you can pull them. You can, you can do really anything with them. It fits really well for what Jacksonville wants to do. They've got a lot of guys in this like 315 kind of range for weight. He's a tall guy. He's got a good frame. Um, has played phenomenal over his career. You can see this throughout his grades. Maybe pass blocking hasn't been elite. He's still been solid in it. And this year took a big step forward. You can see from all of his grades throughout the games he's played, including a game against Chris Jones. You know, not exactly easy competition. Tampa Bay, Philadelphia. You have some good teams on here that he's played against, that he's performed at a high level against, and all these pass blocking grades, every single one of them is better than he's ever graded out before as a pass blocker. So I believe this is a guy who was getting better this season, ran into a little bit of issues with injuries. Minnesota's probably not playing to pay him, which is why they go out, they get Risner, who was not signed, is going to be a super cheap option. And they decide, hey, this is the guy we're going to start. We need to save some money. Makes sense for Minnesota because you have a lot of money you're going to have to spend here soon with Daniil Hunter, probably Kirk Cousins. I hope it's Kirk Cousins because it's terrible, honestly, the way things ended. But Ezra Cleveland made sense as the guy for them to move on from. Now, what's a bit shocking about this is the fact that they did not just take a compensatory pick for him. Because I do genuinely believe that Ezra is going to go for enough money in free agency to where he is going to end up getting a compensatory pick that's larger than what was traded. If he's not re-signed. But I do believe at the same time, this is probably a guy you're keeping around. So, really, really good move. Now let's talk about some of the specifics for this. So, what we saw um, looking at his blocking... The big thing with him, really good run blocker, been consistent in that. That's a huge thing that Jacksonville needs right now. He's going to do a ton if he gets to start on the offensive line. Um, in addition, you know, you look at the contract that you're paying him for the rest of this year. It's about a million and a half or two thirds, you could say. Not a lot of money. Don't have to do anything with your cap. And they give up a 2024 sixth round pick of which they acquired an extra one. So if you want to think about it this way, it's essentially that they're giving up the value of what they got from Arden Key leaving the team for Ezra Cleveland, if you want some context. And they're paying him a million and 66. So 
Not a whole lot of money. Now, as far as what I think would happen for the future with this move, Ezra Cleveland is someone they will have the option to either keep or let go at the end of the year. There's not really a whole ton that they would lose if this did not work out, because I think ultimately someone's going to pay him enough to where your comp pick is very possibly more valuable than what you gave up. So that's worst case scenario, right? It's it's already pretty much a win in my mind. Um, I think that's somewhat realistic too. I don't know if he starts this year. It's a question of the health on the offensive line. I think it's safe to say there's probably going to be injuries. There's probably going to people, sorry, probably going to be people who are out. We've seen Walker Little out for a while. Cam Robinson got hurt last year. He was suspended at the start of the year. Anton Harrison's had some health issues, although he has played all year. Even Brandon Scherf has had issues. So all these guys are potentially going to get injured at some point. And Ezra Cleveland could kick out to any of those spots, or he could fill in for someone who moves out to the injured position. So this just gives you a lot more depth, and it really allows the team to not have a huge concern if someone goes down. Because you're still going to have four very good starters out on the field. I think this is something that is just going to help immensely for what they want. Now to talk about what the future looks like past this year, if this trade works out. So let's go to the Jaguars. Let's take a look at the salary cap. So this won't be updated yet, I believe, but they'll throw them on here. Ultimately, it'll probably change the cap space by like a million this year, realistically. And someone will have to get the mode off, and that's why it's only a million. It's probably not even that full price. But the next season, this is what's brilliant about it. We've talked about it before on the channel that in the future, this team is going to need another offensive lineman and ideally someone who can play guard or tackle. They need someone who can come in and have the ability to start at guard. And if Walker Little goes down or Anton Harrison goes down, you can move this guy outside and start someone like Tyler Shatley, who you're confident in, but right, he's not your starter necessarily. You can put him out there if you need to. And so bringing in Ezra Cleveland gives you that guy long term. So if you've got Cleveland here, you're paying him whatever he gets. We'll have to see how well he performs right now. I would estimate probably low teens, maybe under 10 million, but we'll have to see how it goes. Um, that's probably the value you're looking at. And you're probably moving off of Cam Robinson and trading him for a pick or releasing him straight up because you're going to save a lot of money doing that. So this is going to free up a lot of cap space for the Jaguars in 2024. Because say that you you save the 17.75 million here and then you go and bring in Ezra and you sign him to say uh, maybe three years, 36 million. Well, your signing bonus is probably about 10 million. You split that up over the years and you're probably looking at about four or five million in cap hit. So that's about $12 million we're talking about being saved for the Jaguars in 2024. And it essentially eliminates the issues of signing back some of your key players. You consider Josh Allen on that list, Calvin Ridley, who's probably a franchise tag kind of guy at this point. Ultimately, I think this is better for the Jaguars cap situation. It puts people in better spots. It fits the scheme really well. And I think ultimately it feeds into a little bit more of what the Jaguars have needed, despite being really good in the category because of who they have in the backfield. But this team needs to improve their run blocking. They've needed to since before the season. They've done better than expected, but they can still do more. And getting a guy like Ezra Cleveland allows you to do that. So I I have to give this move an A+. Plus. Honestly, not trying to be biased here, but this made a ton of sense. He's a scheme fit. He was out in Minnesota. He's not out because he's a bad player. He's out because they don't have the money to pay him. He hasn't performed poorly at all this year. He's been better than he's ever been. You bring in that kind of guy who's cheap. He's not going to cost you anything. He's going to elevate this offensive line, which is the key to keeping your quarterback healthy, keeping him in it, and not suffering a fate like what Minnesota did, although technically kind of a freak accident. But you see other teams go through it. You know, throw out Aaron Rodgers, for example, probably a better example overall. You bring in that kind of guy, 
you elevate your offensive line, and in the long term, you have a logical solution for how to go forward, and you have a great unit. I think this is a guy that sticks around past this year. Good character as well. He fits everything the Jaguars could be looking for. So, great move for him. Before I end this video, I just want to make sure nothing has happened from what I've seen. Um, okay, Ben Barch has been released. So that is something. <laughs> um, which, honestly, they weren't starting him. It's unfortunate. I didn't think he was going to be extended, but it makes sense for them to move on from Ben Barch. And I believe... Okay, well, we got another big move. 49ers training for Chase Young. There's some earlier moves as well today. Um, that will be a big deal for the Week 10 game. But as far... Okay, that's old. As far as anything today related to the Jaguars making moves, I think that's probably going to be it. I don't think we see anything else, but fantastic move. Absolutely thrilled about it. So you guys let me know any questions you have. Um, anything like that. I'm hoping over this break we get to really evaluate the roster. You got a little bit of a sneak peek at our long-term discussions. But this is a really good move and a huge part of it too that I do want to make sure I mention. I think this takes care of a huge issue you could have in the draft next year. Because you're probably looking at offensive line help still. It's not really a place you want to have to go again. This is a logical solution for the Jaguars to move forward. So absolutely love it. But I hope you guys are enjoying your day. I hope you're enjoying the trade deadline. Hopefully we get some more exciting news in the next hour or so for me. For you guys, it might be over by the point you watch this. But great move for Jacksonville. So have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your week. Enjoy the bye. And finally, go Jags.